So in this terrific book, The Five Principles, Ellen Davenport writes, the process of affirmative prayer begins with a shift in consciousness, then in words. It is praying from a consciousness of God, from the higher self that is in constant contact with the divine. And this is how we become co-creators with the divine, bringing to life that which our hearts desire. So what is it that you're desiring for yourself? And most specifically today, what is it that you are ready to bring forth as a member of this spiritual community? For now is the time to be especially aware of your spiritual power and responsibility in the creation of a new life and a minister for this already incredible community. What a joyful adventure I envision this for all of us. So would you join me on this joy ride right in this moment as we pray together? And as we prepare to go into prayer together, I invite you to sit comfortably, your head held high, chest open and unguarded. Close your eyes if you'd like or not. Slowing your breathing, relaxing into this moment. Focusing on the truth of your divine nature. as we move into a creative posture of prayer. As a community, I invite you to focus on the truth of abundance, of a universe that is full of infinite possibility, brimming with goodness ready and willing to fulfill our heart's greatest desires. What do you desire for this spiritual community? Is it to be inspired? Is it to unleash your power to create the life you want? Is it to realize our soul's mission, opening to our highest good together? Is it to spread the goodwill of hearts overflowing with love? Know your desire for our community and claim it now. We claim the truth of our loving, radiant, spiritual community, led by an inspirational minister who opens the door to our growth and goodwill. We are the abundance of generosity inclusivity, kindness, and caring that is faith-filled and wise. We embody the divine love that is creating a new community at one with the highest vibrations of peace, love, wisdom, and light. Calling forth exactly what we desire for our community, we pray together in gratitude for the beautiful new life 
that is arising within and through us as we joyfully give life to this journey of transformation in our church. Even now, we sit in appreciation of this gift we are participating in, grateful to be in this awesome, creative moment together. And so it is. Amen. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm super excited to be here with you guys. <laughs> so, as Maggie said, and thank you, Maggie, for all of your words this morning. Um, you know, I always say we're exactly where we're supposed to be, and in our study of the five principles, we are exactly where we're supposed to be today because we are smack dab in the middle. We're on principle number three, which is about our creative ability, our own creative force in connection with all that exists in the universe around us. Um, so we're talking about what we're creating here at Unity Church of San Antonio, so what better time to get in touch with our own creativity. And if you haven't heard me speak before, um, you'll soon learn. I'm also a very concrete thinker, so I like to think about big things that are out there in the world and how we connect to that, but it helps me understand them to look at what's right in front of me as an example. So the first thing that comes to my mind is we're talking about the five principles. So what the heck is a principle? Like, I like to start there. What, am, what is it that I'm trying to talk about? So before we go any farther, let's think here for just a second about what a principle is. And so I looked it up in Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and it tells me that a principle is an understanding or an accepted component or a fundamental truth that serves as a foundation for a belief system. So that makes it pretty easy. It's a foundation. It's something that we can use to stand upon to see even farther than we could without that foundation. And you know, it's not unique to unity. We have our own five principles, but all major religions have their, their principles. Um, in Christianity, some of the major principles are belief in the virgin birth, that Jesus died for mankind's sins, and belief in the resurrection. Judaism actually has 13 principles. I won't recite them all, but some of those are uh, the belief in God's eternity, the belief that God communicates through prophecy, as you may recall hearing in the Old Testament of the Bible um, quite frequently, and also in the divine origin of the Torah. So those are just some examples from other religions about the principles that they hold um, close to their hearts. And another thing that I love about the world around us is that science is also based on laws or theories, um, which is another way of saying principles, because as we all know, that's, even though we think science is hard, fast facts, it's still evolving. We'll, we're still learning more about the world around us. So one way that makes it easy for me to understand spiritual principles, which sometimes seem a little bit out of our grasp and a little harder to connect with maybe, um, is to think about things like gravity. You know, that's something that I don't really, I'm not going to tell you that I understand exactly how it works, but I have great faith that it holds me here on this earth, that it holds our whole entire solar system um, in its orbit and in its place in the universe. So I know that even though I can't understand everything about it, that it makes a big difference in my life. <laughs> you hate to see me floating off in the middle of this talk, right? I don't know, maybe by the end you, you're going to be hoping, was she going to float off soon because we're done here. It's time for lunch. Um, <laughs> But anyway, um, that's kind of the undergirding of what, what is a principle and why are they important. And they're important because they serve as our foundation for everything else that comes, uh, comes and rises up from them. So today we're talking about living from the inside out and what type of a shift in our thinking that requires. 
you know, we look at the world around us and a lot of times we see circumstances, right? We see something that's happening either in our own lives or in our city or in the country or even in the world around us and we think these things are happening and therefore this is my response to them. So what I'm here to talk a little bit about is um, I think that's backwards. I think if any of us um, can think to a time in our life when we were able to, instead of looking at the outside and letting that come in, that we were able to focus on our inner guidance and our inner wisdom and our thoughts and our feelings and our beliefs, and then we let that inform our relationship to the world around us that that's quite a shift in thinking and it can cause a shift in the circumstances that are around us as well. One of the um, things I love about this graphic behind me here is to me that represents the heart energy. You know, that's another proven scientific fact that the energy field of our heart, radi there's a radius around everyone's body that the actual energy of your heart can be measured beyond your physical body. So I don't think it's much of a stretch of the imagination to believe that our thoughts and our beliefs and our feelings also create energy. And everything that we know about this world is really based on energy. So when we're able to align our energy with the energy of the highest and best intentions that we have for ourselves and our community and our world, that's when the powerful shift can come into being. You know, we've all, I think, probably heard this story. I may have even said this before when I was up here, but you know, we talk about, or hear about the family that moves to the new town. And they're on the outskirts of town and they see uh, someone who lives in the city and they say, hey, we're new here. And we're just curious, what kind of people will we find here? And he says, well, what kind of people come from the town where you used to live? <sighs> they were terrible. They were selfish and greedy and mean-spirited. It was awful. That's why we moved. And their new friend says, oh, gosh, I'm sorry to tell you, you'll find the same kind of people here. So, you know, a couple days go past, and a new family, a different family, comes along, sees the same gentleman, and they said, hey, we're moving to your town. What kind of people will we find here? And he said, well, what kind of people were in your the, your former city, and they said, oh, they were wonderful. They were just loving and generous and giving and kind, and he said, that's great. You will find the same kind of people here. And, you know, I think that goes beyond just um, the easy explanation. We find what we look for. When we truly believe in unity principle number three that we're here to talk about today, then what we're believing is that we help create that environment as well with our beliefs and our thoughts and our feelings. And you know, I keep saying that word feeling because feeling is really what's behind the energy that we create. You can have the thoughts, but when you align those with your feelings and your heart energy, that's when that great connection is, um, is really opened up and allowed to take place. So what do we really know about this shift in thinking? and this rising of our consciousness. Well, one important thing to remember, I think, is that it allows us to claim our birthright as a child of God, a child of the universe, a child of divinity, whatever word you would like to insert in there and use for the creative energy and force that brought our world into being and that continues to um, rise us to a higher state of consciousness and being. Because if we believe, last week we talked about principles one and two. Principle one, God is all good and everywhere present. Um, there is nothing outside of God. And then principle number two follows right along. We, as humans, have a spark of that divinity within us. We are part of that. So as part of the God of all creation, as part of that great wholeness, we cannot be anything other than creative. We're sparked from the greatest creator, the greatest source of creation that there is. So creativity is part of who and what we are. So it's really not a stretch to think 
that we are here to create the existence that we have, that we are here to create the circumstances around us. And, you know, what better or more worthy creation than the actual life that we live and the way that we touch others and connect to others around us? Now, of course, our own beliefs and thoughts and feelings are at constant interplay with all of those around us. And I think that's why it's important when we come together like this, because like the movie that's going to be uh, presented here on Friday evening, looking at what really happens when like-minded people bring that energy together and focus that energy. If you think that you have the power to change your own life, imagine what focused energy with all of those, um, those people thinking along the same lines will, will create. And that's something that's very important here right now at Unity Church of San Antonio, as we are. As Maggie said, she's holding her intention for what the next minister will look like. You know, and so when we work together to hold that space, we did that 14 years ago, and it brought us Reverend Linda, which those of you who have been here and um, heard her speak and seen her in action, and if you haven't, you can go back to, um, as Maggie mentioned, our website and listen to some of her, her um, messages, and you'll see that by holding that vision together, um, we really did manifest something that was amazing for this community, and I am certain that that is what is in store for us in the months ahead. So, you know, we think about what we want to see and have in our lives. You know, the easy things to focus on are the concrete things in front of us. You know, I want to make a lot of money. I want a fancy car, right? Um, I want a big house. I want a new refrigerator, whatever, right? But what really lies behind those wants and those desires? What is the higher realm of thinking there with those easy to identify objects that come to mind? So you know, you say you want a fancy car, but what's the higher purpose there? Safety, reliability, you say that you want riches, but what's the ultimate spiritual goal behind this? A life of sufficiency, a path of faith, knowing that all your needs have been accounted for already. So when we can align our higher um, self, the higher truth, that big capital T truth, with the riches that the universe has for us. That's when the true magic, that true spark, really can explode in our lives. So how do we get to that, though? Like, what, wh why should I believe that these principles actually will work in the world? Why should I believe that, right? And what I say to that is be relentless with your vision. Be tireless in your pursuit. Be steadfast in proclaiming your good and be passionate in claiming the power of each present moment. It's funny, yesterday we were, um, Paul, hi Paul, and I were listening to um, uh, a little uh, pump me up video about the Dallas Cowboys. Go Dallas Cowboys. Um, they play at four o'clock today, in case anybody wants to make yourself available for that little game. Um, and the, the commentator, or you know, the voiceover said, and I told Paul, I already had that written down for today. Relentless. It was a great, like it made you want to go out and conquer the world after you listened to this. But you know, he's looking at the football team. They're, they're on the verge of accomplishing something they haven't accomplished in a while. And he's saying, be relentless in your pursuit. Don't listen to it hasn't happened in the recent past. That doesn't matter. That's not, we're not here about the past. We're here about the future. We're here about creating in this very moment. And yes, it was a football team and it was a, you know, a coach's message and a, you know, a great moment of pumping up his organization. But the same can be true for every single one of us. It's the same message. Be relentless. Don't give up. Focus on that goal. Um, be dogged in your determination. And, you know, that to me comes down to one of our 12 powers, again, 
all 12 powers will be covered in, in Friday's movie, but one of them that really bubbles up to the top for me when we're talking about trusting in your creative power in this world is the power of faith. And you know, faith is not a weakness or a shortcoming. It's not something just to fall back on when you say, oh well, I guess I just have to trust. It's extremely powerful. So again, back to my um, liking to think in concrete terms, think about gravity. When you get up in the morning, you sit up in bed, you don't think, do I need to hold myself to this ground? You trust. You have faith in the, the theory of gravity, in the principle of gravity. Why? Because it's consistent. It works. You've seen examples of it work, working every single day. So you know, once upon a time, there was this, this guy, Sir Isaac Newton, saw an apple fall from a tree. And he's the one who thought up the idea, well, why, did, wh why does this happen? And he comes up with the thought, well, there must be some kind of force that's making that happen. And he's a way more sciencey guy than me, so he, he knew how to get to what actually made that happen, right? I, on the other hand, I just have faith that he knew what he was talking about, and we all pretty much stay anchored to the ground when we walk around. Um, but, you know, beyond that, beyond just seeing the apple, beyond just seeing what was in front of him, he went beyond that. And he thought, okay, well, if it's happening right here in front of me where I can see it, then that, what if, it was a big what if for him, what if that means that that same force goes beyond this tree and beyond this apple and beyond the, the heavens that I can see? And what if that is what holds all of this universe together? And, you know, that really sparked a, a thought in me because it's kind of the same thing. What if this energy that I feel when I walk into a room, what if this energy that I know radiates out from every single person's heart, um, what if this energy that I am certain I have connected with to help create some of the things that have come about in my life, what if that goes so far beyond anything I can see or imagine? You know? So... Learning about gravity and learning about the theories of the natural world sometimes help us to, um, you know, kind of put legs to those thoughts that we have about the spiritual principles that we see unfolding around us and that we believe in. And, you know, recently I have been helping with some caregiving for an almost six-month-old. Amazing. You know, my girls are now 15 and 17, so... Um, I'm a little far removed from that. But this little baby, so I watch him and I think about gravity, right? And I think about, he can't sit up quite by himself yet. He's almost there, but every once in a while he topples over, right? Um, <laughs> so it kind of speaks to the whole, okay, so we're here on Earth, in our, in our Earth suits, walking around, and we have our idea about what our power is and what our creative force is, but somehow we know we're connected to something bigger and greater. So this little baby, even though he may not be able to form those thoughts, he's learning to work within the realm of gravity, but also with his own sense of balance and how, how the interplay there um, is what keeps him balanced and will soon have him crawling and standing upright and walking, and so without even having to think about it, he takes his own knowing, and he's connecting it to a greater knowing that surrounds him. And that's kind of what we do here with our principles. It's the same concept. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but it helps me understand and think about things um, a little bit differently. So you know, some areas of creativity that come up for many of us as we think of creating the life we most desire are things like health and wholeness and success and money and happiness, love, security. I would think those are some of the universal things that we all would like to see manifest in our lives. So, in the area of our power of faith, what faith has to tell us, faith is the assurance of things not seen, like gravity, like oxygen. When something consistently supports us and upholds our best intentions, we come to trust in it. 
So trust in your creative capacity. Trust in it as much as you trust in the air that you breathe. Faith also informs us that the power within us is greater than the power of the world, living from the inside out. So trust your wholeness, trust your health and your wellness, and trust in the potential within you, the same as you trust in that little tiny acorn that you see on the ground, and you understand that it holds the potential to grow into a mighty oak. Faith sees beyond the apparent circumstance to the higher truth. It sees beyond the veil. So trust the unfolding of your desire as you would trust the unfolding of a bud of a rose. Faith allows me to be undaunted by appearance, to step into the power of I am in every moment. So trust your abundance. Trust your sufficiency and your wealth as you trust in the flow of the river to the lake to the ocean. As you trust in the natural world around you in its ability to sustain life and its inherent wisdom, look to this as a daily reminder of your own ability to co-create with the divine. You know, as part and parcel of God's creation, as millions of points of light on this planet that are sparked from the divine, sparked from the very hand of God, the creative force of the universe, we as humans can and we will and we do create our own reality hand in hand with the source of all creation. You know, a wonderful example of that, some of you may already be familiar of this, with the story of Myrtle Fillmore, one of the co-founders of Unity, and if you're not, um, just consider for a moment. She was diagnosed with tuberculosis at a young age and lived uh, what she described as a fairly unhealthy life. She was, um, you know, considered weak and was not given a great prognosis. And one day something sparked in her the understanding and the belief, the unshakable belief that that was not the story of her life. And so she, with dogged determination, every day would, would pray. And in doing so, she honored every organ inside of her body. She went into prayerfulness every day for hours and told her body how wonderful and beautiful and well-designed it was and how, how grateful for a heart of gratitude, how grateful she was for its gifts to her and to sustaining her life. And you know, the thing I love about that is that she said she was not discouraged at her body's slow response. She didn't just throw up her hands and say, well, this isn't working. In spite of appearance, in spite of what she could have easily been led to believe, she kept at it day after day. Weeks led to years. And finally, she remained faithful, she remained focused, and she had a complete physical healing that was probably unexplainable to the, the medical um, world around her. But she believed in it, and she, um, Actually, that's, um, so Reverend Linda has moved on to um, uh, Unity Village. She's in Missouri now, cold weather. I think it was 20 degrees when they arrived there. But she has gone to be the vice president of Silent Unity. Myrtle Fillmore's work is what Silent Unity was, was born out of. So it's a real thing. It's, a, it's a something that works. It's an energy that we may not be able to um, completely describe or understand, but again, I offer you up the theory of gravity that I also do not completely understand, but I believe wholeheartedly in. And um, so it is, it's that relentless faith, be relentless like Myrtle Fillmore, you know? Be um, unafraid like Peter, 
who walks on water. He's, the, the disciples see Jesus walking towards them, and they think, is this an apparition? Is this a ghost? We're afraid. And Jesus says, no, guys. Hey, it's me. It's Jesus. Remember me? And Peter says, well, if it's really you, then command me to do the same. And so Jesus says, okay, do it. Peter starts to walk on water just like Jesus until he notices the great waves around him and the wind whistling around him, and he becomes afraid. And so for a moment, he loses his focus, and he starts to sink. Jesus scoops him up, and he says, why is your faith so small? Why did you not believe? You had that power right there. You were doing it. So we have some great examples that have been laid out before us, and um, I believe that we each have that power within us. And as I heard in a uh, story that was actually about a uh, principal redesigning his entire school schedule to work instead of around the convenience of the teachers, to work for the betterment of every student, he said, our minutes must be focused on our mission or we will not shift. So that's where our energy and our focus becomes the ultimate goal that we should have each and every day. When you focus your minutes on your mission, that's when your shift will occur. So I invite each and every one of you to purchase the book if you would like. If not, I'm sure there will be a lot of us who will be finished with it soon after our um, uh, study of these five principles. But I want you to understand that principle three tells each and every one of us that human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning in thought. And the quality of your thinking will determine the quality of your circumstances. So take that with you. Remember that you're a divine spark of the great creative force, and you are a creator of all that you see around you. And now I would like for us to go into a little time of meditation together, remembering how creative and amazing we are. And to lead us into that, um, close your eyes and get comfortable. And I am going to read to you one of my favorite excerpts from Marianne Williamson to help us get into this quietness and stillness and this knowing. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So knowing that you are fully divine and fully human, knowing that you are on earth to express God as part of you, as part of the spirit in its infinite variations. Remember, tell yourself, be relentless in the pursuit of knowing. I am free and unlimited. I am the creator of my experience. We are co-creating together my life, this world, all that is. I play a part and the universe would not be complete 
without me. This message has been brought to you by Unity Church of San Antonio to open your heart, transform your life, and celebrate your divine identity. Visit us on the web at www.unityofsa.org. And remember, you are the light of God, so shine brightly today.